I cannot believe that I am saying this right now, but it has been more than a month since Apple launched Vision Pro. Let's take a look back at the device and ditch the fanboyism and take a real analytical look at Vision Pro. How this thing actually holds up after an entire month of use, who it's built for, and how my opinion has changed. Let's dive into it. I don't need to like rehash the entire design and build of uh, Vision Pro, right? Like you guys have all seen this. You already know basically what it is. It's a large aluminum body with a laminated glass front. There's a screen in the front that helps to convey where your attention is at any given time. It's also a good indicator when your device is updating, it'll show on that external screen. So that's pretty cool. Inside are two gorgeous micro OLED panels. They have more pixels than a 4K TV each. It's powered by Apple's custom M2 and R1 chips. The former handles things like graphics and computations, and the latter will deal with things like motion and camera tracking. It comes with two straps in the box, the solo knit loop and the dual loop band, which brings us to a good spot to start. Comfort. Personally, I've struggled with a lot of other headsets and honestly, sometimes even glasses. Like I'll put my glasses on and they can hit like right behind my ears and then I end up with like terrible headaches. Headsets do things that are similar as well as giving me pretty terrible bouts of motion sickness while I'm wearing them. So going into Vision Pro, I was a little bit uncertain at how things were gonna go. When I first demoed Vision Pro, I, I was a little bit worried. I put it on and right away, it felt heavy. And after the end of my 30 minute demo, my head definitely hurt. But once I got the headset home, I was able to play with the fit a little bit more. So I primarily used the solo knit band and I was able to get it on my head into kind of just the right spot. And I was able to adjust it really easily with this knob back here and just find the perfect spot that for me was just really comfortable. I've been able to wear it for hours on end without any fatigue, no headaches whatsoever. I know I may be the outlier here because I know there are a lot of very vocal people that did not have the same experience while wearing Vision Pro. Fortunately, Apple does include that secondary dual loop band, and that one is reportedly a lot more comfortable. I really just stuck with a solo loop because it works for me, but at least Apple has two different options in the box, and I'm, I doubt it'll be that long before we see some third-party bands also coming to market. But here I am, a month later, without a single incident of queasiness. And the pass-through video is so good that at times my brain is simply bamboozled to thinking I'm looking at the world around me and not looking at the world through cameras and screens. Unsurprising to me, my favorite use case for Vision Pro so far has been consuming media. I mean, it's truly the closest thing you can get to actually sitting in a theater. At home, it's just too easy to get distracted with what's around you or even just the urge to get up and do something that you remembered there on the spot while you're trying to watch a movie or TV show. But when your surroundings become slowly obscured by a tranquil lake and a large hovering screen, you're just focused and fixated on what you're watching. It's, it's hard to really put into words, but for me, it makes me feel the media more. Jump scares in horror movies hit harder. You can feel dread when a character in an action movie is put into peril. And the scenery in adventure movies just can literally make my jaw drop until I remind myself to close it. This is especially true when watching something in 3D. There's a wealth of content here, but I've spent most of my time living in the Apple TV app, as well as in Disney Plus, which also includes my Hulu subscription, so, you know, extra perks there. Don't get me wrong, watching videos is not all sunshine and roses. There are still downsides. You're watching this stuff alone. So if you want to share that experience with someone, you can't while wearing Vision Pro. And honestly, that's a huge downside that can really be a make or break experience for someone. Some apps still have also not yet been optimized. 
So much so that Apple puts them into their own special folder on your home screen, not living with the rest of the Vision OS apps. One of the biggest ones is Amazon Prime Video. This is literally just the iPad app. And when you're watching a video, it has big old black bars on the top and the bottom. Just kind of kills the experience a little bit. What's worse, some apps are relegated to the browser. <coughs> Netflix. <coughs> Sorry, Netflix. I was just coughing a little bit. Uh, but it would really behoove Apple to get more of these big media companies to play nice and to develop these apps for Vision Pro to really become the media powerhouse it, it could be. I thought the speakers on Vision Pro were pretty solid. They were above average for a headset set of speakers and they sold the spatial audio pretty well. I still prefer AirPods and if you're trying to like watch this in bed, the spatial speakers can get really messed up if you're trying to like lay on a pillow. So yeah, I found myself just using AirPods more often than not, but I wasn't sad with how good the speakers on the headset actually were. One of the things I'm really interested in that hasn't had a lot of discussion around it is Apple's plans for future immersive content. Apple has several shorts already available in like the TV app. There's like Alicia Keys and a Highwire one and they look amazing. I mean, they completely like surround you. They completely fill your field of view and they're really, really cool. But there's only a few of them so far and Apple hasn't talked about how it makes these or future plans to make more of them or where we'll be able to see more immersive video like that. I think this is really cool and if Apple could expand the production of these, maybe making any of its original content in this form factor that beyond a couple minute short, I think it would be really great. As I was loving that massive big screen experience with Vision Pro, it of course had me considering the gaming ramifications here. This was probably the biggest mixed bag of the entire experience for me. It seems confusing, not easy, and I'm not really sure Apple considers Vision Pro an actual gaming device. As it stands now, unlike with other VR headsets, Apple doesn't include any motion controllers. So your options are either pair a console controller like the DualSense or use your hands. Your hands are fine for the likes of Apple Arcade stalwarts like Fruit Ninja, Jetpack Joyride, or Lego Journey, but you're not going to be able to do much more. Those are still basically flat 2D games with some spatial elements going on. There is Game Room, which is kind of cool. You can play chess in 3D space, but again, it felt kind of limiting to me and I grew tired of it pretty quick. You know, hand controls are great for browsing the web. I just I just don't think finger guns are going to work in Borderlands. There's also a distinct lack of co-presence multiplayer games. That's basically, for those who don't know, when you are kind of like occupying the same 3D space together and playing with other people. And without that, I think it's really going to hurt gaming even more. So how do you get other games onto Vision Pro? For me, I use an app called Mirror Play, which allowed me to mirror my PlayStation 5 into the Vision Pro. Sony actually blocked its own remote play application from appearing on Vision Pro, so this is as close as you're going to get to a first party solution here. This works surprisingly well, and other than the occasional lag was probably the best gaming experience I've had. I prefer this over a big TV, plus Faith can watch her TV shows or Harrison can watch his shows while I'm still able to game inside of Vision Pro. There are other streaming options too, like GeForce Now, or Steam Play, or Sunlight Moonlight, uh, but these streaming games are still just not the same thing as a VR immersive 360 degree game. Frankly, it's things like this on the software side that seem to be holding Vision Pro back the most. It's not like it's bad, and the groundwork that Apple has laid so far is absolutely astonishing. It's very impressive, but it's also like, it's missing some basic stuff, like rearranging your app icons. Yeah, don't you dare try to do that. No, they're gonna be in alphabetical order and you are going to like it. I do like the eye tracking and the finger gestures. It, it feels very natural. I like that I can rest my hands down at my side, on a desk, on my lap, and I don't have to be like wildly waving them in the air to actually interact and do things. I can just keep them at my side and interact as I need to. It feels less intimidating and less intrusive. Personas, if you 
if you haven't heard about those, took a lot of heat with the initial version of Vision OS. Um, but Vision OS 1.1, which is currently in beta testing, looks to improve these personas even more, which is, which is very good. Personally, I don't think mine looks half bad. For me right now, on the beta, what seems like the biggest killer is like the eyes. They don't emote. Like I smile and my eyes don't move. It does a decent job with my hair even, but yeah, for me, it's always the eyes as, as the giveaway for it. But I still prefer, you know, this persona versus the animated ones that you have on the Quest. I think Apple does have a lot of ground to make up here. And hopefully, Apple gives us a preview of Vision OS 2 at WWDC. So, fingers crossed for that. For Vision Pro to be someone's primary computing device, it needs to do more than just entertain you with movies and TV and games. It needs to also lend itself to productivity. Productivity is the third leg that I think Vision Pro basically needs to stand on. Don't get me wrong, I think Vision Pro can be a single-use device. I, I don't see anything wrong with that. In fact, you might have seen me do an entire dedicated video to why I think Vision Pro is a good replacement for like a $4,000 TV. But for most, to justify the price, I think it has to do more. I think mileage will vary, but for me, Vision Pro just wasn't productive enough on its own. Like I can't edit videos in Final Cut Pro. I can't edit photos in Affinity Photo or Photoshop. And even Apple's own photo app lacks basic editing capabilities. The one thing I could do was write articles, assuming I paired a keyboard with it. I wasn't about to dick tape or chicken type with my fingers in the air entire articles and posts inside of Vision Pro. I could work in Google Docs. Microsoft Office Suite is also here if, if that's more your thing, but uh, I could do that just fine. But I, I'm not paying $3,500 to edit Google Docs on the moon. What ended up working for me was pairing my Vision Pro with my Mac. It ends up with this blended, unique experience that did help improve my productivity, while also adding at least $1,000 to your purchase price here. To fit my workflow, I positioned my Mac display in the middle with ancillary windows surrounding it. My Twitter client hovers here to the left, while I put things like the news over on the right. For those of you who don't know, I also have a little one, and uh, we still use a baby monitor. We use it to watch him in his bed, it's called Cradle Wise, and funny enough, it's available here on Vision Pro. So I can work, watch TV, and also have a live feed of the baby monitor going all at once. Niche? Yeah. But it's so freaking cool. So that brings us to the story of apps on Vision Pro. Now the flow of new apps has slowed down from the steady stream that we saw upon release. But there are still some pretty cool new apps that have dropped recently since the Vision Pro launched. Apple will happily jump at the chance to tell you that there are more than a million iPad apps that are compatible with Vision Pro. And while that's true, they don't always translate the best. Sometimes they're just a little weird or wonky, sometimes they're buggy, and at best they seem like a stopgap solution. There are some great standouts though. Dusk is a great Twitter client, TikTok has gone native, Bitmaps provides these tiny, spatially optimized Apple map pieces. Typos mirrors your iPhone keyboard for better text entry. And of course, I already mentioned Microsoft Office, Fantastical is here, Things. These are all massive Mac apps that have made their way to Vision Pro in a native spatial app. And they're great. I just want to see more big name apps make the jump sooner rather than later. And any feature updates to some Apple apps also wouldn't be unwelcomed either. Apple has had kind of a rough year when it comes to developer relations between changes in the EU and App Store lawsuits. So I, I really hope I don't have to wait like a year to get some more powerful productivity apps or VR style games on the Vision Pro. Here's the thing. When Vision Pro is good, it's really, really good. I started to ask myself at the end of all of this, despite the negatives that I have gone over, are there things that I would rather do in Vision Pro that I can't or don't want to do with my other devices that I already have? 
Would I rather do things with this just strapped to my face? And after some time, more and more, the answer became yes. Yeah, there are a lot of negatives here, but that doesn't mean it's a bad product. I think Apple is on the right track, and the more I use it, the more I love the experiences that it provides. I love being able to work in such a large spatial landscape. I love being able to watch movies and TV here versus on my TV. And even games are cool, though I still wish we had some actual VR style titles. But there is so much potential with this device. Frankly, it's got me excited again. What do you guys think of Vision Pro? Do you think Apple did great on a first gen product? Or do you think it still has a lot more to do before it should have brought this to market? Let me know down below in the comments. You can also let me know on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU or over on threads at AndrewHera941. Always stay tuned. Got a lot more coverage coming your way.